Empowering the region with AI solutions to improve healthcare, a new centre will be launched in Singapore in the first half of next year to train officials and develop a workforce. It will also look at producing predictive AI models to identify chronic diseases as well as surveillance systems for the early detection of potential outbreaks of infectious diseases and to better manage pandemics. Now, this nurse companion robot was also introduced at an biannual conference on AI in healthcare. Missy helps with repetitive tasks such as monitoring patients' vitals and delivering medication. The prototype has just been completed and 30 Missies will be deployed at NUH wards next year. There's also a WhatsApp chatbot called Champ that reminds patients to update their latest readings. They can also get some of the historical data. More than 9,000 patients are currently enrolled with hopes to extend it to over 150,000 patients. Doctors are also being encouraged to come up with ideas to use AI in high-risk areas. You can use JDI in the high-risk sector but at the same time to also understand the barriers associated with it and hopefully to come up with a playbook and hopefully that this playbook can then be replicated across many other different high-risk sectors. Now for more on how AI is changing the future of healthcare, I'm now joined by adjunct professor Nyam ki Yuen, head of the Academic Informatics Office at the National University Health System. And also with us is assistant professor Feng Meng Ling from the NUS Saw Sui Hock School of Public Health. Uh, welcome to the program, professors. Professor Thank Feng, you. let's start with you. The, the new Center for AI in Public Health, why the need to involve the region? Yeah, thanks a lot for having me and thanks for the question. So for our AI Center, proud to share that we are the first uh, center dedicated to address AI solution, particularly for public health issues uh, in the Southeast Asia uh, region mm -hmm. and probably even the APEC region. Our center uh, focus on developing AI solutions that can apply to population level applications, for example, disease prevention, uh, health promotion, equitable access to healthcare and early detection for pandemic outbreaks. Mm. As one may see that we can't do this alone or just by a center in NUS. We have to collaborate with all the Ministry of Health in Singapore and other Ministry of Health in the region as well. We're in active discussion with, if, even with WHO regional office now. We strategically position Singapore as a hub and a leader uh, to cultivate collaboration, uh, cross-border collaboration that develop these uh, initiatives that uh, research programs that can benefit the region as a whole. We encourage knowledge sharing, experience sharing to avoid redundant mm. uh, research efforts mm. and to uh, approve and speed up innovations in the field. One of the priorities is, of course, early detection. Uh, perhaps you can share with us more about the AI-powered surveillance systems for early detection of potential uh, outbreak diseases or pandemics. Yeah, we truly believe that uh, AI will be the transformative uh, uh, solution here. Uh, to enable uh, continuous monitoring and uh, early detection for the next outbreak. Looking back at the history data, we actually noticed that uh, there were already early signals and telltales months before we finally detect the previous uh, outbreaks. Mm. So now we are developing an AI solution that can con continuously monitoring to our national uh, diagnostic records, of course, protecting our patients' uh, uh, privacy and their identity. And then they can early pick up the signals and predict the risk of the next pandemic, enable us to take preemptive uh, actions. And in addition to that, uh, leveraging large language model, now we can enhance the AI model uh, with unconventional data sources as well. Uh, uh, for example, the social media data, uh, including text, uh, videos, images, or all of them. Great. And you know, with AI, Professor Nyam, mm -hmm. um, there are always ethical concerns. So when it comes to using AI solutions, specifically in healthcare, mm -hmm. what are the key considerations to ensure that there are no ethical breaches here? Yes, so I understand that, uh, that you know, the use of AI in healthcare is especially controversial because we are dealing with healthcare, right, which is a high risk, uh, high risk uh, you know, area. So to address those uh, issues, uh, the Ministry of Health has publish mm. uh, guidelines for AI development. So one of the earliest guidelines that was launched was the Agile guidelines that's mm -hmm. published by Ministry of Health after consultations with uh, multiple uh, stakeholders in the ecosystem. And there are yet other new guidelines that are coming up to help us guide the, 
development and the deployment of AI in healthcare. And to summarize, I think that um, tools that are developed ostensibly for medical treatment need to go through a higher bar. And that's where the Health Sciences Authority uh, come in to regulate uh, AI tools that are used as medical devices. When it comes to personalization, um, looking at the Missy robot, for example, um, it is capable of interacting with patients, providing a personalized care with empathy and humor. It is very exciting, but one may question if it's losing you know, that human touch that's necessary, that's essential when it comes to caring for a sick person. Absolutely. So uh, I think we have to be clear that Missy is not intended to replace a nurse. Right? We call it a nurse companion. It is intended to support our nurses in doing some of the more manual and rep repetitive tasks like vital signs taking, delivering medications. Sure. But mm -hmm. because of the, uh, it is a cloud robot, meaning its capabilities are residing in the secured commercial cloud, uh, we are able to extend capabilities such as large language models to enable it to have conversations with patients, for example. So in this particular instance, we have developed some area of personality for Missy to be able to do that. But I don't think it takes away from the human-to-human -human, uh, mm. care when it comes to uh, medical or healthcare settings. So it will never replace the nurse's job, uh, as you said. Professor Fung, you know, uh, from improving diagnostic accuracy to enhancing patients' treatment, uh, give us a sense of how much workload is being reduced here, especially with the help of AI. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, uh, one project from my lab, uh, we developed an AI solution that can uh, read digital mammograms and, and help our radiologists to diagnose uh, breast cancer. Uh, the solution, we call it a fandom memo. And to evaluate and study how effective the a AI may help to reduce the workload, mm. we conducted a study in NUHS uh, involving 17 radiologists, uh, comparing the productivity of AI plus radiologists and just radiologists alone. From this study, we, we, we are very happy to find out that uh, with the help of AI, not only it helps to improve overall the uh, diagnosis accuracy, it helps to re reduce the uh, uh, reading time uh, by, by 25%. Mm. Um, so with that, uh, once again, we reinforce the belief is that uh, AI will not be replacing our doctors, but a doctors that are able to use AI effectively is going to replace those that cannot. And speaking of these doctors and nurses, what's been the reception like among the healthcare professionals? Are they convinced to use these AI tech, Professor Yang? So as with any new technology, there will be some initial resistance in uh, you adopting these new te technologies. But once you um, educate and put in the correct change processes to uh, help uh, the staff mm. understand the benefits as well as the risks of these tools, then we can see an adoption curve that goes up, right? So for example, uh, we have a, a large language model bot called Russell GPT. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, initially intended for clinicians, right? And, but what we found that uh, it was actually more effectively taken up by nursing because they found that you know, the speech to text capabilities were more attuned to their workflows. So certainly um, there will be resistance, but uh, with the appropriate education and uh, change management, I think we can certainly get people to onboard them. What about the patients? Has there been resistance on their part? Oh, that's an interesting question, right? Um, typically, most of these uh, AI tools are designed to work in conjunction with clinicians, right? Uh, so uh, there are a few products that we use uh, directly with our patients, for example, chatbots. So that has a slightly different uh, complexion to it because uh, patients perceive AI as how we perceive any other app on your phone, right? They, they think of it as something that helps them. Mm. So there's a slight depersonalization, uh, whereas for clinicians or nurses to AI, I think that perception is more, this thing is to help me, is to sure. augment me in my services. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Professor Feng, we've heard earlier in the story about Missy Robot and the Champ Chatbot. Uh, what other areas are on the horizon for you? Um, one very exciting project uh, I'd like to share is that uh, in collaboration with NTU, Duke NUS, and also the SDF uh, Core Center 995, uh, we have developed an a AI assistant that can understand Singlish and also can help our... Singlish? Yes, yeah, okay. so <laughs> mixture of Mandarin, Malay and, and English um, and assist our corticals in 995 to uh, bet, uh, more accurately try the, 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 the sickness uh, severity levels of the callers and, and also uh, a faster uh, turnaround and send the ambulance. 
Uh, inspired by the uh, successful outcome for that project, we are now in close discussion with MOHT, our collaborator in MOHT, to generalize that solution to other hotlines uh, under the MOH. AI really changing the face of healthcare here. Professors, thank you very much for speaking with us tonight. Professor Nyam Ki Yuan from the National University Health System and Assistant Professor Feng Mengling from the NUS Source Weehawk School of Public Health. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.